one and we're live and we are live <laughs> hey everybody i'm dan adelko producer matt and i'm Matei. Hey, producer matt you can stop your uh you can stop your uh, slack screen share we don't need that remember that <laughs> oh yes my skype screen or your sharing. skype that's right awesome don't want to mess with the live stream this week. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to episode 124 of Live Not at the Hive, the coronavirus update edition number three, mm -hmm. that would be for us, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, how's everybody's week been so far? Let's just do a quick check-in. It's, uh, it's, it's been good uh, for me, Matei. I, I don't know. Uh, you got more people over there than I do. <laughs> Matei has more people over there than anybody. They're actually yeah. technically aren't you violating the the rules? Isn't it like groups of five? Yeah, but we don't leave the house at all whatsoever. So <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> how many tell tell everybody in the audience how many siblings you've got, Matei? Oh man. Thirteen and with me there's fourteen of us. Oh wow. Fourteen. Yeah. Yes. Matei's I'm... family needs to be a reality TV show. That's what I was that's what I've always been saying. <laughs> I'm currently hiding out in the right wing of the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's what you said. You're like, oh, Matt, like, I got a lot of people here. So, like, if you hear anything in the background, just mute yeah. me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Justin, how's it going? Justin's in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, I hope everyone's uh, doing all right. Week three of uh, staying at home. It's been interesting. But, uh, yeah, a lot of us are missing the, the hive. But it's... Uh, it's coming along nicely for us. It's uh yeah, and it's it's you know what it is is it's what it's what we've got to do, right? Yeah, straight up. Fl flatten flatten the curve and um and and this thing can be beaten. So for sure, yeah. I think I know? think they uh, released some numbers uh, today at a press conference at around twelve o'clock. So the measures that we're taking right now are definitely making an impact. But uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot more that we should be doing. So don't uh, don't look at those numbers and say, oh, we're going to be fine now. There's uh, we're, we're a long ways from uh, yeah. back to the way things were, for sure. This is so true. Hey, Justin, so now I've got it up as well. It's Hannah, so Stacy. All right. Trying to, get, trying to get Facebook to figure out its own <laughs> full screen. Oh, don't well, Facebook's been right. busier than ever. It's, uh... Well, it, it it is, and that's actually one of the things we are going to be talking about, and hopefully hopefully the stream remains HD and, and, and relatively smooth. Yeah. It's a little bit choppy here. Yeah. We'll do what we can. And under worst case scenarios, we've got this recording as well, so you can always check out the YouTube version. Yep. Um, oh, let me start. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is some of the, now that we're in it, right, we're... Um, week three for us and it's looking like it's going to be eight more weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> of this yeah. so mm -hmm. so it's what we have to get used to um we are comscore did release an article on the state of uh uh how coronavirus crisis is impacting digital media consumption in canada so this is really useful um for businesses and marketers to understand what's happening um, and how people are shifting their their digital their habits in in pretty big ways, sure. um, at, yeah. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a lot today about I think what is useful for people in in any whether you're an entrepreneur or where you whether you're an employee of a company, uh, you know, or you're a marketer. Are what are the things that you can do today if your business is lucky enough to still be operational? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you can do today to manage communications during this crisis, um, keep in contact with your customers, and then some some pretty practical things that businesses can do? Um, if because I know for a fact there's there's a lot of different types of hesitation right now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sure. Um, should I be marketing? Should I be communicating? Should what? If so, how should I? What should I be doing? So as always, if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them into the comments here, and we will uh, we will answer them all as mm -hmm. they come in. Mm -hmm. And I am just going to spin up my Facebook watch party. Yeah. Um, so why don't we? Why don't you guys just start by digging in uh, to the Comscore study? I, I don't know. It's been a pretty busy week. I don't know if you guys had a chance to dig into it yet, but 
some good stuff in there yeah no uh we've definitely i uh, looked through it i know a lot of the bees uh looked through the uh the article when you dropped it into the chat uh i think it was a couple days ago um but yeah <laughs> the, the, the key themes of the article is, is pretty simple so it's it's more so about canadians consuming news at a at a faster rate uh how social media and messaging um how canadians are staying uh more connected uh than usual uh especially throughout their communities and local communities how entertainment music spiritual content etc uh, how that's kind of morphed into um, into a more kind of social atmosphere. I know beforehand there was a lot of kind of live streams of uh, entertainers on platforms, yeah. but now more than ever, even mainstream celebrities are pretty much giving quote unquote concerts uh, on um, on uh, social platforms. But also it kind of talks about how government is using social media um, and digital platforms in order to. Um, uh, convey important messaging uh, across uh, the country um, and as well as uh, finance. So increased focus on uh, investments and uh, payments as well. Yeah, obviously. And, and just to, uh... you okay? Okay. I'm all good. Sorry. I was starting my watch. <laughs> it's party it's all good. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Um, yeah. This com score article is, is really interesting. And, and I mean, I think it goes without saying that, uh, visitors uh, to, you know, the news sites are obviously a main source of information. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just, it, I've been a victim of this too. Um, you know, and I know Matt, you're a victim of this because you're a junkie. Um, <laughs> I would suggest not having it up and running all day long. Um, yeah. You know, try to get your check in on it once a day, but it does go to show. Now, I think, I think the thing that's, challenging about this graph is this increase right here are massive numbers mm -hmm. right um, mm -hmm. these are already very very popular very very busy uh sites um yeah. and if we scroll down and we were to look at how are people communicating right now mm -hmm. and we can see that email on an aggregate daily um uh user visit is an increase of 14 percent so people are emailing more frequently, which means their eyes are on their inbox. Mm -hmm. um, the really big one, instant messengers, 31% um, yeah. increase in aggregate daily uh, views, 31% in the number of visits per day. And then social networking, uh, up 21% in terms of visits and plus 36% increase in total minutes per day. Mm -hmm. So as we start to dig into it, though, and you look at this, um, what it means is, and I think one of the biggest and most impactful things here is that there is, oh, hi, Vicky, Vicky and Ken joined the live stream. Hi, guys. Um, How's it going? Nice. So we are talking about how Canadians are, are changing their patterns, and, and this maps directly to how we as marketers and business people, where should we be communicating and, and what's a good place and a, and a good way to do it? Well. Mm. If you if, got to find the section down here, government sites, yes, there's Facebook is down here somewhere. That 21% increase, people are really consuming a lot via email, instant messengers, and social networking. I, I mean, those, those are some pretty large numbers. And especially, I think, on the social media side, there's been several articles I think there was one that kind of made me chuckle where Mark Zuckerberg said, we're just trying to keep the lights on. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think he means, I don't, I don't think he means that they're trying to like make enough money to keep the lights on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I don't think that's the problem. Um, is that, uh, I think what it is, is, is it's the traffic spikes that they've got. Let me just see. I've got the the New York Times article over here. As well, well, I think even their moderating of content has uh, dropped off quite a bit, haven't they? Uh, because everyone's working from home now. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a little bit slower uh, to moderate the content that that people are posting on these uh, on these platforms. Well, we know we know for a fact as well, and, and if you're doing any advertising right now, is that approvals are taking a lot longer than normal. Yeah. Um, we haven't actually seen that. We've seen a slight delay. In, in, in the stuff that we've been working on, but it's, um, you know, certainly expect that that could possibly be the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's the article from the New York times there. Mm -hmm. I have um, yeah. 
so skyrocketing usage. And I, I still find this pretty incredible that Facebook is trying to, it has, but I know this is part of Mark Zuckerberg's um, persona is that he's not, he's not a real big fan of people working from home. So, so they, they weren't really tuned up for that, which I, I find it to be a little bit ironic. Yeah. It yeah. Ironic. <laughs> yeah. So people are turning to obviously the news sites, but as a business, you've got right now, I think what's important for everybody to understand, and I'm not, I'm not advocating um, hard sells and things like that, but there are certain businesses that are doing things and we'll, we'll get into it. How especially software as a service subscription style sites are able to deal with, how do you deal with this? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes their stuff, and, and look, we've been doing it as well is we shut down the things we that are not absolutely essential right now because we're all trying to be frugal and you know mindful of what could happen mm -hmm. like the unknown yep mm -hmm. so i think one of the important things for a business you're just looking at the digital engagement on social is to say people are in an information consumption mode right now right mm -hmm. um sure. yeah Right. With businesses working remotely and then people that are unfortunately unable to work, then what ends up happening is their eyes are on the channels like YouTube, on Facebook, Facebook Watch, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, mm -hmm. um, Facebook Messenger, um, uh, I, iMessage as well. Um, mm -hmm. And what you have in LinkedIn is is we're seeing quite a bit of activity there. So as a business, one of the things is during this time obviously being sensitive but to your customers is providing expert advice yeah. for them at this time how to deal with the community like for us it's how to communicate what what are what are the right things to say mm -hmm. publicly to your customers how do you acknowledge covid-19 mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. what are you doing and then what we've seen be very successful is offer useful information that's that's actually like immediately actionable for your customers, something that they can use in a snackable form, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And continue to do that. The second thing that that I would suggest, given given a lot of this data here, and we're going to get into it in the next uh, article, which is uh, how do you uh, you know how should local businesses and businesses in general be communicating during the COVID nineteen crisis? Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, is um, like what we're doing right now. Have webinars. If you're a real estate agent, a lawyer, uh, an accountant, um, I mean, accountants are probably super busy right now. I don't know that <laughs> they even have any time. They're one of those those industries going crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for those types of people, what I'm going to do is so if a real estate agent go live. You go live every day for 45 minutes to an hour. Answer your network's open questions about the market, about mortgages, about lending, about buying and selling. There will be um, an endless supply um, of, I think, of inquiries and questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Justin saying, what social media platform do you guys think is doing the best? I think they're all, you know. Yeah, I, I I think that they're mm -hmm. all definitely having a, a huge spike right now. But you, you gotta you gotta remember, I think um, right now people are really hungry to connect with one another, and I think one of the That's platforms good. that people use on a day to day basis, Messenger uh, is one of them. But Facebook is definitely one of the uh, the biggest platform that I feel right now is definitely feeling the increase. I mean, uh, we have all of our friends from years ago on the platform already. I think it's one of the most platforms that at least I feel most connected with people, even though I have Twitter, I don't have as okay, many boomer. connections. Yeah, pretty much. Right. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I don't use Facebook yeah. as much as I have in the past couple of days. And I think that's primarily because I have more connections on Facebook. Um, and yep. people are posting content and it's, it, I think it's a lot better quality content, uh, that we've seen on Facebook over the past couple of days, for sure. It's more personal mm -hmm. posts. It's people posting pictures mm -hmm. of themselves. Uh, the memes are starting to die down on Facebook, at least from what I see on a day to day basis. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's definitely a little bit more personal and it's, uh, Facebook definitely going through a content transformation right now. I feel. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the way, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Mate. Oh, uh, I was going to add uh, even another platform that people don't really associate with acting on this kind of event would be Pinterest. They're actually at the moment suppressing certain content that is in relation to COVID-19 
and that for me because i mm-hmm. i do do some uh content creation for uh some pinterest accounts at honeypot uh just recrafting the content and offering certain types of content that really really help people like for mm-hmm. example some of the content that's been helping is cooking tips from things you already have at home um health and wellness uh just and it speaks to the client as well that is actually sending out this kind of content. But again, just I, I didn't think Pinterest would have, it would have such a big effect on Pinterest. But yeah, for sure, even the ads before sending them out, it's taking a lot longer. <laughs> Sorry, you, okay. your I, I, screen just kind of crapped out on me there and I had to readjust you. Oh, okay. That's okay. No, you know what? Did you see I that? That's honestly, I. I do think that's an NDI thing. I think that's an NDI um, thing too. Because I watched the Joe Rogan podcast. He had a, an NDI connection, like a Skype call yeah. um, two days ago. And the same thing was happening. Yeah, it's the exact <laughs> so same I, thing. It's popping in and out. So I got to yeah, kind of recalibrate. We'll, <laughs> we'll just deal with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jessica Cook is saying, plus Pinterest is booming for everyone looking for DIY projects to try while in isolation. And... Mm-hmm. Yes, there's been many numerous reports that paint sales are through the roof. Mm -hmm. People are painting. Um, Cooking even. I know like the past couple of weeks, like my cooking game has increased quite significantly from being in in, in quarantine. And we're getting a lot of our recipes from Pinterest. And Mm -hmm. whether it's like baking recipes or just like quick dinner recipes, uh, Mm -hmm. we've, we've been on Pinterest like quite a bit. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, just a couple of notes on, on social media networks. I, I don't think it's an if, you know, this or that, because each one of these networks from a marketing perspective kind of has its own certain specialty uh, and its own certain type of a niche. Um, you're getting on Twitter, for example, news sources are, are able to quickly go. I mean, there's been a ton of lives. You can go and find lives from every major government if you want to find it. Yep. Um, so, you know, Twitter doing what Twitter always does and, and the stuff that's there. But again, as a as a kind of um, ticker of news and updates and different things, they're spiking obviously there. Mm-hmm. Facebook, to your point, Matt, which they, they do have the strongest, you will tend to have the strongest personal networks on Facebook because mm-hmm. your parents, grandparents can't, you know, all sorts of different ages of levels of people are interacting Mm -hmm. uh, there. And then that's much more of a social, right, interaction, Um, right? So for real estate agents and professional services and people that have local businesses, I would focus your efforts on Facebook right now because that's where a lot of your people will be. Absolutely, right? especially right sure. now. Yeah, I think I think a lot of businesses, and we're going to be diving into this uh, in a little bit more detail uh, quite shortly, but I think a lot of businesses right now should be using Facebook more than ever. I think that you should yep. be uh, utilizing uh, at least once a day, communicating with people um, from a business perspective, um, creating content, posting content, whether it's like a live video like we've talked about the past couple of days, whether it's making sure that you have a story on your page once a day. Um, it's definitely a great time to take uh, mm-hmm. advantage of this increased uh, engagement across Facebook. And, uh, and yeah, we need, we, mm-hmm. we need to do more. Sorry, I'm going to fix you right here. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, one of the other things that um, I think is important to kind of focus on here is that um, giving out the types of information that are useful to people. So, for example, one of the things that we've been putting out on our LinkedIn and our Facebook page have been um, effective virtual working tips and strategies. Mm-hmm. So, more than just having Slack or, you know, Zoom or Global Meet or, you know, whatever webinar platform or, or video conferencing platform you're going to use, along with that comes how you use it, right? Yeah. And how do you use it effectively to keep a team connected, to prevent people, especially during this time, from feeling stress, possible depression, um, to creating, you know, virtual water coolers so, so people can work together, feel connected using video calls, that kind of thing. So, in terms of like, and then, and so that's our strategy, which is we're not selling obviously right now. We're also offering, we're going to start, um, hopefully next week is we're going to start a series of free webinars for small businesses that need some advice Mm -hmm. so that they can just come and join. So it's, you know, we're not, we're not charging for that. 
it's just kind of at least they have someone to ask an actual question from, uh, mm -hmm. specifically about their own situation, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then and 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 so whatever vertical you're in, whatever your business is, is finding all of those things. Like I said, if you're a mortgage broker, there's obviously a lot to talk about with government programs and what's mm -hmm. happening with the economy and you know how can people uh, get their heads around this. Yep. Real estate, same thing. Uh, legal profession, I mean, goes on and on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you have a daycare, for example, that that you can't, um, or you've got, you know, there's lots of businesses that are arts and crafts related. Uh, April just mentioned she did a virtual paint night yesterday. Tips nice. for parents on keeping kids sane. Um, this is the opportunity, and I think this is the approach that, as as a business, you want to take. Um, and create that relationship level of engagement with people to strengthen those bonds during that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're a dentist, you can't be open right now, unfortunately, but certainly a dentist with skills um, could go live every day, once a week, twice a week, three times a week to answer people's questions about dental care during this time. Like how do, you know, what are the things I should worry about? Mm -hmm. um, and then... The, just to move on the network side of it, LinkedIn is a really great place, as always, to mm -hmm. kind of flex your, um, your, 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 your business networking muscles. Yep. Um, it's been, the engagement's been very, very high. We've seen growth across every single one of our profiles that we, that we run. And we've been increasing the, um, we've been increasing the frequency by using, uh, uh, an anchor content strategy to create snackable content. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if, if, if that's something we want to talk about. Um, but we can, you know, use all the different channels. And Instagram serves different purposes, I think, as well. Um, but I think right now, pick your network. Um, and I agree. I, do, I don't disagree. I think Facebook's killing it because... Just as an example, um, one of the things that we did with our kids was they obviously were getting a little bit uh, crazy, uh, missing their friends. They're not mm -hmm. in school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. I have to give Facebook credit. The Facebook Messenger for Kids app is is actually really well done. Um, parents can set up their kids, and then parents can actually see what's going on. They see who messaged them. They can control who's allowed to connect with them. Um, and so it's it got a good level of parental security. Mm hmm um, but obviously those connections are all going through Facebook, right? Sure. Yeah. So they've been having video calls and doing fun stuff with emojis. That's, that's all pretty helpful. <laughs> right on. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Yeah. I, I guess while we're on this topic here, I'll, I'll share the article that I have up from, um, uh, from marketing land. Um, mm -hmm. so this article just kind of bases down, uh, and talks about what we've been talking about for the past couple of minutes now is just how, how local businesses should be communicating with customers during COVID I have some nice, uh, some nice tips here for people. Uh, we'll drop the article down in, uh, in the chat just so people can get a little bit of uh, better context. But uh, some of the, some of the uh, recommendations that they have here is kind of using your site to inform your customers. So creating a pop-up banner or a pop-up window or a dedicated page on your website just to, so that the people kind of um, uh, keep getting updates on, uh, on how your business is coping. Uh, whether you're still offering any services. So I know a lot of businesses right now are actually allowing um, to ship alcohol uh, from their restaurants with uh, delivery orders, which is uh, kind of interesting. Nice. Um, so yeah, so I, I think kind of just including little updates like that is really important. And I, my, my scene jumped right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now you're back now. <laughs> now I'm back. It's, it's, it's a, it's a tug of war right now with OBS. Uh, so yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. What about being creative with email? Uh, I know a lot of people, um, they might be kind of staying away from their emails right now, but uh, we've actually been having some quite, uh, some really good success with uh, some emails, Dan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, 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 I would never say, and I think this is the big mistake, if you're in business or you're in, in marketing within a business, it's not the time, unless you're physically closed, mm -hmm. right? Even then, I think, especially for local businesses, if you're closed, a one weekly update about how things are going, what's your remediation plan? You know, if you have a restaurant that's closed, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. why not send your customers some easy recipes that they can do at home? Right. Yeah. Maybe maybe your best yeah. dish that uh, that that's at your restaurant that people love to make. Right. Maybe. Yep. Uh, maybe post the recipe online or do a quick video of how um how you've been doing it. Like I know I'll, I'll do a quick shout out right now, but a relish cooking studio. Uh, I went there for a lesson um a couple of weeks ago, but uh, their Facebook page yeah. they've been posting videos on uh some of the uh, people's favorite recipes so that people can cook along with them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I mean, yeah, things like that is, 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 is excellent because people mm -hmm. have more time than ever to, uh, put a little bit more love into, into the meals that they make uh, at the end of the night. Right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and it's sorry, funny that you ahead. say that because, uh, on Pinterest right now, people, one thing that is trending is, uh, people are trying to remake recipes of their favorite dish from mm -hmm. specific restaurants oh, that's cool. and people are posting the results. Like that's, it's happening right now on Pinterest and Businesses can take advantage of this. So well, we made uh, we made macaroons. I think a couple of days ago. I don't know if you saw that uh, that story, but oh, I saw they it. they turned out pretty lackluster. They were macarons rather than macaroons. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a good chuckle at that post. <laughs> right. So here's here's just some examples of of good content for for several different types of businesses. Obviously, the restaurant one that goes without saying. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that we've been doing, for example, are um, a tip series, how to effectively use your webcam for video conferencing. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's obvious to people like us. It's not so obvious to a lot of people in the world. These are tips that uh, should be, I think what you should be doing is make it actionable, make it snackable, and make it really consumable, but ultimately as useful as possible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. where you're providing this level of value back to your customers. Um, and, you know, in a sense, this is the type of marketing that we've always advocated for for, for 17 years mm -hmm. yeah, is, sure. you know, this is the Gary Vaynerchuk jab, 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 right hook, right? Yep. So, you know, answer those questions. Provide FAQs. Like, here's another, here's another good tip for people that might be experiencing this. Um, in the world of, of uh, video conferencing, mm -hmm. human beings have this really strange, um, a really strange habit of booking meetings for the top of the hour for one hour. I don't know why, but people <laughs> do that all the time. And what that means is, is that video conference call bridges, it doesn't matter who it is, it's Zoom or Global Meet or whatever, go to meeting, um, any of them. Mm -hmm. um, they always at the top of the hour have a deluge of people trying to log in and, and join um, conference calls. Now it's probably millions of people. So a good tip is schedule your meeting for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes past the hour on off times when people are already logged in. And you'll have, you'll have a much better success rate, I guarantee you, right? Sure. Um, yes. so, so those are little things like that that, you know, Every business has these things, the things that you're an expert for. So if you're an accounting firm, it's obviously how to navigate government updates during this time for people that are in your geographic region. Mm -hmm. um, for daycare and anything involved with kids, give tips, tricks, and ideas for parents and kids to remain sane when they're uh, under lockdown, right? Mm -hmm. Parents will certainly appreciate it. And for a brand, I think the most important thing right now is to develop those relationships. Um, if you've been unable to transition into um, uh, a, a digital presence, and, and that would be very unfortunate, um, at least what you can do is use the tools that exist today to further strengthen and develop those relationships with your current customers, right? Mm -hmm. So email, absolutely. <laughs> now don't email every day. Um, once a week can be good. Mm -hmm. um, the banner and pop up on the on on the website is absolutely important. Um, we've got ours going live, I think later today. I, I was working on it earlier. I'll mm -hmm. just get it wrapped up. Nice. And the covid nineteen classification posts um, 
I don't know if we want to talk about Google My Business right now and the importance of it. I mean, like, okay. there's there's some. I I know we keep harping about the importance of Google My Business, especially for small businesses. But uh, I mean, they have some really good stuff in there uh, for COVID at least right now. Like, I know they have a dedicated COVID uh, information um, tab that you can uh, use in your Google My Business uh, uh, page. So uh, definitely yep. utilizing those tools. But if you don't have Google My Business right now. Right now, I would say is like the perfect time to get it. it. All it takes is a little bit of waiting to get your postcard in the mail, um, mm. and to, to activate it. So, um, well, even if you're not fully verified, you can still have it up. Absolutely, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and for those of you that may not know, or this is newer to you, um, Google My Business is really the yellow pages of the 21st century. It's where your business can show up properly on. Google searches, which is a, a huge discovery method that people use, especially for local businesses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when you Google, um, let me just see. I here. have ours up here for Honeypot. Okay, so if you look at if you do something like Waterloo Marketing, for example, mm -hmm. and just Google that, you're gonna see what's called the Map Pack. Yep. Okay. Did you Google? Yeah, can yep. you Google just like Waterloo Marketing? Yep, I have that um, up. Okay, cool. So you'll see that there's the map and then the map pack below it, um, and we show up uh, quite well there. And it, it, that's another part of Google My Business that's extremely important. You want to own the map pack for certain terms for your business, um, and then you're going to get a, a ton of stats and a, a ton of really cool tools, all for 100% free from Google. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not using it, it's a great place for you to be posting your updates to your customers because, yes, you should do it on Facebook, for example, but on Google, people are going to discover your special messages when they Google your brand name, for example. Mm -hmm. right? And there's a, there's a post section there. So if you have updates, you want to tell people, hey, we are open, but we've got modified hours, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure you get into your Google My Business and create those posts there as well as on Facebook because I may miss it on Facebook. Right. I may yeah. not I may not interact there or see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I guess one other important thing um, is Google's put an embargo on new local reviews uh, as well as the ability to reply to reviews. Um, it's uh, it's I think it's pretty obvious kind of why I think there's a lot just going to be a lot of stress out there. I don't know that reviews would be fair for certain businesses. Frustration, everything's closed, um, you know, and 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 so. But it's important to know that, like, if you've got a review program running right now, now is not necessarily the time, uh, and you can't do it there. Mm -hmm. um, they can on Facebook for um, your Facebook business page, or you know, Yelp and and various other directories as well. Uh, but just knowing that Google's uh, Google's local is not uh, is not up and running. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I like the last one too, which is incorporate offline messaging. Yeah. Um, I did hear a story. Uh, I don't know what town it was in. I don't think it was like Toronto. I think it was a, some a smaller town. Uh, someone was telling me that um, one of their local breweries um, does have uh, someone on a bike, um, biking around with a little bike trailer on. They've got, uh, I think they have an N95 mask or something. But they're biking around their their town delivering beer, so people can order their beer, drop it off on the doorstep, and yep. and uh, this has been a little bit of a a local uh, splash, I suppose. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, if if uh, local businesses are still uh, up and kicking, I mean, people more than ever are willing to uh, are willing to support them for sure. I mean, for me at least, I, I grabbed some couple local beers from a couple breweries. Uh, uh, it was just a couple mm -hmm. days ago, so yeah. I mean, if if, if you can uh, if you get get creative like that, I mean, why not, right? Well, I think this is I think that's an important part of this too, and this is part of the conversations that uh, um, part of the, some of the conversations that we've been having with with clients is mm -hmm. this is going to people are gonna it, the pressure is gonna build up where people don't want to be at home anymore, and they they're gonna be tired of social distancing, right? That's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's going to be when this opens up, which it will, right? Which is why, you know, unless you've been absolutely forced to completely shut down, I, I wouldn't shut down completely if that may, if you can, right? If at all possible is the, are those updates. 
Because what's going to happen is, is when this is done, there will be a tsunami of activity very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to be there and engage for that because we really don't know what's going to happen. There's, there's obviously a global recession or depression, depending on who you listen to. But there's also never been this much worldwide economic stimulus, so kind of who knows, mm -hmm. right, what that effect's going to have. But certainly the mistake would be to be caught flat-footed because you decided not to do anything, um, shut everything down, stop communicating, and then you're really playing catch-up when things are back to normal. And I think that's an actual threat to a business, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. I mean, some businesses have been shut down completely, and that's that's really sad. It's very, very unfortunate. Um, you know, especially folks, for example, I know in, in, in live event coordinators, um, but with all of the support, hopefully people will be okay. Um, and just for live event coordinators, as an example, I think one of the things, and I've, we, we don't sell virtual events. We, we work with others that do them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because they are, they are incredibly complicated from a production and technical standpoint to put on, but I would suggest for virtual event or, or for event organizers, now is a perfect time to get yourself tuned up on how to hold virtual events. There's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of ways that that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, and now is a time, if you're, if you're forced into it, is to work on diversifying the revenue channels for your business, right? Yeah. Um, tough to do under stressful circumstances, but sure. there's opportunity in everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Well, we've got a few minutes left. Do you want to talk about some of these other tips for the crisis and recession? I, I thought, I, I yeah. Think. Yeah. So we have a our last article here is just kind of talking about um, what a marketer's role uh, as a specialist, uh, what our role is uh, throughout this uh, crisis and uh, recession. Uh, so it kind of talks about um, advice for brands. So uh, being agile in the short term um, while keeping like a long term strategy alive. So for us, like we've been doing um, the short, uh, what we've been doing is we've been kind of switching up our live at the hive um, topics to kind of surround and help small businesses cope uh, with this tr uh, transition uh, that they're experiencing. But again, we're keeping the long term strategy of live at the hive as a educational platform um, for people, right? So you're kind of just switching it up a little bit and pivoting. Um, mm -hmm. The next one is kind of uh, socialize internally what you've been doing um, as like your regular cadence, right? Um, so mm -hmm. being sure, uh, yeah. being sure to like share what kind of new plans we have, uh, how we're, how our marketing, uh, is performing. Like we've been talking about with our uh, email campaigns and some of the other strategies that we've been implementing recently. Um, mm -hmm. but also checking on your messaging and communication streams, uh, again, like we said uh, before, uh, platforms that are experiencing exponential growth in terms of, uh, engagement. And, uh, we want to make sure that the content that we're putting out on Facebook is, I think number one, really appropriate, especially for this time. Yeah, um, sure, yeah. but also, uh, you want to make sure that it's informative and relevant within the uh, current context as well. Right. I think one of the important things, especially for the corporate side, and we were on top of this a few weeks ago, as soon as we saw that this was absolutely coming, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you saw one, one fatality in the United States, it's like, oh, that's where this starts. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it is, um, is revisit every single one of the, because typically obviously as marketers, you're a month, at least a month ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and while all of this is going on, really take a hard look at, at the um, any of the communications, marketing channels, campaigns that you had running. Um, you really need to stop, you know, pivot them, spin them, put it in context. Do not let that same old communication continue to run. You have to put it in the context of what's happening in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, that's 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 super important to, to not look tone deaf and completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Right. For sure. Um, you know, some of the, some of the other ones here, um, a couple of, I think, I think a good thing here, and a, there was a thread on about SAS products by Pete Plaza that, that I, that I totally agreed with mm -hmm. was a, a Twitter thread that he put up mm -hmm. is that a lot of businesses are working as partners with their customers. Yeah. Right. You know, some some people are shut down completely in very dire financial situations, mm -hmm. extending three month free offers. You know, OK, yeah. that's fine. 
-hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Play the long game and not the short game. I think it's important that this this is a long game. Mm -hmm. um, we will all get through it. It's it's probably going to get harder before it gets easier, for sure, mm -hmm. like across the board. Mm -hmm. But I think if you've got a business, is practice empathy. Um, you know, especially larger businesses. Um, if you have a business where you're taking a subscription or you're, you know, you've got people on a monthly, some kind of a, a, a recurring payment subscription plan, if you simply don't change your behavior or your habits, you're playing the short game and that's going to cause you long-term problems because mm. people will remember this. Right? Yeah, I think that's that's a key underlying message is that people will remember how you have um, acted throughout uh, this whole uh, pandemic or this whole crisis. I mean, if, if you're taking advantage of your customers right now or if um, you've had a lack of communication um, or even if you've been helping people, uh, people are going to remember it. And uh, it, it's, it's all going to come down to um, where your business is positioned once we've kind of yeah. quote, un quote unquote back to normal. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all we all have to work together in this. And we've had uh, conversations with several people saying that we are going to work together, whatever those circumstances may be. That's, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's work through this together and figure it out. Um, and and I think that's the approach. But if you know, I think every business needs to adapt to this kind of conscientious capitalism approach, um, especially if you have a SaaS subscription site. A lot of people will be just canceling as soon as a you know a credit card payment doesn't uh, doesn't f uh, go through, and they get you know your account will be suspended. I think people will be like, okay, fine, suspend me. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Unless you're a mission critical service to my business, I'd rather do without. Mm -hmm. um, a uh, great example um, for anyone out there who uses Adobe, um, they do offer. Uh, a credit subscription to the subscription they'll offer you a few months where you don't have to uh, pay anything for your subscription and uh, again it just offers it shows that empathy and uh, I know a lot of people that uh, because of this uh, current situation they no longer have a job and they mm -hmm. use it to make a living like they freelance as well mm -hmm. and they and I just let them know hey just letting you know they're doing this they were so happy and it just shows that you build a relationship with the uh, with uh, your uh, your clients for sure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And look, I mean, you know, the bigger companies, the public companies like Adobe certainly can sustain a lot more than smaller oh, yeah. businesses, right? Yeah. But even for smaller businesses, um, if 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 you're able to just have that empathy for your clients and your customers and say, we're in this together, we're going to work through this together. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, there's going to be bright spots that happen. You got to keep smiling. You got to keep laughing. It's pretty grim out there. Um, yeah. But I think it's important that as businesses come together. So if, you, if you've got a small business, for example, is, um, is, is, is reaching out to your customers and even saying, I mean, it depends on the business, but, but saying that, you know, you're here, we're here for you if there's something we can do, right? Yeah. Um, and again, a lot, of that type of, a lot of that type of content and a lot of that type of communication is actually what we've always advocated for. It's just been magnified a million times because of this this pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and again, I think another thing too is if you've got a professional service business, providing a webinar and then contact your local chamber of commerce and tell them, hey, I'm an accountant. I'm going to do a webinar and I'm going to answer. I mean, you could just do basically an ask me anything, right, mm -hmm. for an hour. Mm -hmm. If you get... Um, that will be something that you, you I think will be both helpful to everybody in the situation um, and 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 help position you and marketing the right way during a crisis. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. Time is it? Five oh five. Time is five oh five. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I uh, I got a new pump in my septic tank, so I'm super pumped about nice. that. Super, I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. Nice. It's good times. I, I learned things I don't want to learn yeah. today yeah. about what, I'm sure. what septic tanks do and how they work. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you guys up to this weekend? Uh, same uh, stuff, different it's, day. It's, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, us, I... go ahead, Mate. 
Oh, no, oh, no, you go ahead. You finish. Oh, we're just doing nothing. Watching Netflix. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, the Netflix. Try to get us a... Yeah. How about you, Matei? For us, it's... uh. Well, this evening, uh, we're going to put a little bonfire on for the... Uh, the whole family just to get them outside nice we've mm-hmm. been stuck in this we've been stuck in the house for quite a bit mm-hmm. and everyone's kind of getting sick of each other so just getting out the s'mores nice big bonfire nice and just have a good time there in the backyard because why not nice. right mm-hmm. yeah we're we're a little lucky mate because we're both in smaller towns that have kind of substantially yeah. more uh space yeah for sure thank yeah. god for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> try to get out try to get out mad at least you know we go um, on car rides we go like we go on walks and stuff like that so we're not like coaxed up in here but uh but yeah it's it's pretty much keeping ourselves busy cool well, i'm gonna try, try to uh again <laughs> <laughs> um just so everyone knows minecraft earth is now available if you signed up for the pre-beta download it was available mm-hmm. yesterday on the play store and uh and uh, uh i guess on the apple store yep Thanks. um i'm gonna Try to make some uh, some homemade masks using a couple of tutorials on on uh, on uh, on YouTube. Nice. Not a replacement for an N95 mask, but better than nothing. Mm-hmm. So why not? Yeah. Sure, All right. Sure. Well, try to get outside if you can. Socially distance. Stay six feet away. Wash your hands twenty seconds at a time. <laughs> Do all the right things. Wear gloves. And uh, stay safe, and and we'll uh, we'll see you all next week for episode 125 of Live at the Hive. See you guys then.